Hello everyone. Week two, and this is um, um, third. This is the third session of week two. In the previous session, uh, we clearly, um, I hope, we clearly understood how we can feel hunger and how uh, active feeding behavior can be uh, developed, right? And then you can imagine, okay. Um, we just consumed a lot of food. And from now on, I'm about to introduce the, um, the bioenergetics, uh, in particular by focusing on the carbohydrate digestion. So today's topic is carbohydrate digestion. So in the beginning, uh, we have to review what the carbohydrate is. So carbohydrates. So general chemical formula is C something, water something. The number wise. Why is that? Carbohydrate. Carbon. Carbon is hydrated. So hydrated carbon. One good example is glucose. Glucose is the most important source of carbohydrate for your body from your the um, corns and rice. Um, and you are looking at the structure, the linear form of glucose or ring form of glucose. So chemical formula is based on this. We can just write it down. Say 6 H12 O6. 6, 6 carbon containing um, hydrated uh, molecule, glucose. All right? So this glucose can be can be stored can be stored in our liver and in our muscle in a form of glycogen i'm going to show the structure of glycogen um, in a minute okay so what types of carbohydrates available so we have to go through the structural aspect of carbohydrate the saccharide means sugar Okay, so depending on the depending on the number of number of building block, uh, mono means number wise one, right? Monosaccharide means just one simple sugar molecule. So oligosaccharide means several um, building blocks like sugars are polymerized, and lastly, polysaccharide means many several thousand and more than that, many, many, many um, monosaccharides are uh, linked throughout um, covalent bond, so-called glycosidic bond. You are looking at over here, glucose molecules, these monosaccharides, are, they are linked throughout this covalent bond. And this bond is so-called glycosidic bond. So starch and glycogen and cellulose, um, those small dots indicate glucose. They are being uh, polymerized throughout those covalent glycosidic bonds, sometimes branched, sometimes just uh, linearized and very heavily and tightly packed each other. And they can form different types of glucose polymers, polysaccharides. Um, in terms of monosaccharide, obviously glucose, six carbon containing um, carbohydrate. The other one is fructose and galactose. Fructose is how many carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six. But structure is more like uh, pentagonal and galactose and very close to glucose. So the reason I show this monosaccharide for you is to introduce the, um, the disaccharide structure. When glucose and fructose, they are linked by glycosidic bond, these two um, sugars, uh, when those two sugars are linked in a form of disaccharide, that means this is um, sucrose. Su, sorry about that. Sucrose, All right? And when two, two glucose molecules are linked, 
in that case that sugar is called maltose right and when glucose and galactose they are linked that disaccharide is called lactose probably those words lactose maltose um, sucrose uh, probably um, you probably very familiar to those um, different types of sugars there um, can be easily found from the food labels all right let's begin with the digestion this carbohydrate digestion begins inside your mouth inside your mouth the first digestive um, organ uh, in the uh, digestion system so in particular there are many glands around your oral cavity so, salivary glands in the mouth secret saliva in particular the enzyme called amylase amylase is the first major enzyme can break down the polysaccharide sugar polymer glucose polymer starch right so when glucose they are polymerized in the form of starch just imagine you just had a lot of bread or rice a bowl of rice and saliva inside of your saliva there is a amylase can cleave that covalent bond so make this polysaccharide large molecular weight polysaccharide into smaller pieces and then um, what's next okay in your saliva uh, uh, in your mouth salivary glands and amylase break down carbohydrates and then there is no further digestion throughout your esophagus or even stomach there is no digestion carbohydrate digestion so main site of complete digestion of carbohydrates occurs in in your small intestine small intestine okay and what types of organs and enzymes are involved in in this process in this process means carbohydrate full digestion so full digestion of carbohydrate occurs inside your small intestine so when the chyme so chyme means chyme means partially digested food mixture with hydrochloric acid this is secreted from your stomach and other uh, fluid this when this chyme getting into getting into the duodenum the, the beginning of small intestine and that that's the kind of signals and when chyme enters into your duodenum that send the signals and pancreas release digestive enzyme pancreatic pancreatic amylase so pancreatic amylase is against like um, um, your salivary amylase its, its main job is to further further degrade further degrade the polysaccharide carbohydrate into smaller oligosaccharide and and there are more enzymes dextrinase and glucoamylase you don't need to remember those um, or names of those enzymes but their job is to hydrolyze oligosaccharide and and overall this is the the structure of your small intestine so highly folded up throughout those epithelial cell linings highly invaginated this is called villi structure and um, intestinal epithelial cells general morphology looks like this in particular this region is facing the lumen that means the outside outside of our, our body right and severe chemical digestion occur so the small intestine also produces other enzymes like lactase or sucrase and maltase and those enzymes 
ultimately break down, break down, let's say, lactose into glucose and galactose. And in the case of sucrose, sucrase um, degrade sucrose into glucose and fructose. In the case of maltase, degrade maltose into two two glucose molecules. So my point is carbohydrates, so polymeric carbohydrates can be chemically degraded into individual monosaccharide. And next step for carbohydrate digestion is um, the absorption of these digested uh, monomeric um, sugar particles inside your body throughout this brush border cell layer. Individual sugars now fully degraded into monosaccharide, they should be absorbed. That's the topic for next session.